Hey everyone, Heather Tote here. I hope you're doing awesome. And I'm excited to talk about today's topic, which is three surprising ways that the law of attraction is centered on the Bible. I received some feedback lately from some readers, and I think I may have caused a bit of confusion in some people's minds because I am a firm Christian believer and I'm actually LDS, Latter-day Saint, or better known as Mormon is our nickname. And you'll know that if you read my memoir, Fighting for Our Lives. And I talk about how my faith helped pull me through fighting cancer while I was pregnant and just kind of turning that over to God and releasing it. And I received some feedback from readers on that book that were a bit confused. They said that I profess to be a Christian, but then later in the book, I talk about using meditation and visualization and how I believe in karma and affirmations. And they thought that that was not Christian. And so I, with deep love and respect today, would like to propose to you to consider the idea that the law of attraction and Christianity are very much interlinked. And I believe that they are one and the same. I think that the confusion comes in because people use different terminology when they're talking about really the same things. It's just said in kind of a different way. This can be likened to two different people talking about the same thing, but using different languages. They're talking about the exact same thing, but the words they're using is different. And that can cause some confusion. So I'm going to use a couple of scriptures from the Old and New Testament to kind of illustrate how the Bible is centered or the law of attraction is centered in principles in the Bible. So the first one is Matthew 21, 22. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. I'm going to say that one more time. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Now, this covers the three core principles of the law of attraction. The first is ask. Know exactly what you want and then ask for it. Second, believe. Believe that it's already yours. Believe that it is coming to you and that God wants you to have good things. Three, receive. Allow yourself to receive it. Use the law of non-resistance and allow yourself to receive those good things into your life. And another great scripture that illustrates how the law of attraction is centered on the Bible is Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Here we are learning that everything that we think about creates our reality, which is exactly what the law of attraction professes. And it's exactly what Christianity professes. And it's exactly what, you know, Taoism and Buddhism profess. It's exactly what Hinduism, you know, like all the major world religions are centered on this idea. Truth is truth, no matter what. And so just because Christians label it a certain way and law of attraction people label it a certain way and Taoists label it a certain way, it's all talking about the same thing. And we need to embrace those core truths because truth is truth. So what we think about, we become. It's as simple as that. Those thoughts that are going on and on in our minds create our reality. If I'm constantly thinking negative things about my brother, Am I going to have love for him? And am I going to have a good relationship with him? No. So the way to change that is to change my thoughts about it first. Thoughts affect behavior. Behavior affects actions. Actions create your reality, your life. It's as simple as that. Then in Psalms 37, 4 through 5, it says, Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit, the, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. So here's God's promise to us. He wants to bless us. He wants to give us the desires of our heart. We just have to trust him. And that's very similar to what the law of attraction says, to not worry about the how. Ask him and trust that what is good and right, it will be given to you. So it's that letting go. That's one of the hardest things for me. And I learned a lot having to let go, just to trust that, what he wanted to bring about in my life would happen and that my good desires that I bring before him, he will bring them to pass. And I'd like to leave just with one last scripture here. Luke eleven nine 9 through 10. And I say unto you, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth 
and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. I read the scripture with my children yesterday. We kind of have a little Sunday interview I like to do with them. And I was telling them, look, if you have a problem, just come to him. He's there ready to help us. He's there at the door and he's going to open it for us. So if we want something, ask it, ask for it. If we're seeking for something, ask for it. He will give it to you. So be willing to ask, believe, and receive. Those are the three core tenets of the law of attraction. And I hope that I have helped you see how they are rooted very much in the Bible and in Christianity. I hope that this has been of service to you and that you can take something away from it. Uh, if you have any comments or suggestions or other scriptures that you found that help support this idea that the law of attraction is rooted in Christianity and kind of the resemblances between the two, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, I wish you all the health, vitality, and happiness in the world. Thank you so much.